Hello everyone, David here and welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of me here we have another walker from the Galactic Republic. You could also call it the little brother of the ATTE. It's the ATAP or the All-Terrain Attack Pod, which was a sniper tank that was used in a number of battles throughout the era of the Clone Wars. Most people know it from its appearance on screen in Star Wars Episode 3, on Felucia or Kashyyyk, where it fought alongside tanks like the Clone Turbo Tank or the AT-OT. It has a giant cannon on top that was used for long-range sniping and was so strong that the walker needed a third leg for stabilization when the cannon gets fired. It also has a ground-facing cannon for defense against single enemy troops and a manned swiveling turret on top. When you look at it, it basically feels like one half of an ATTE. It even has half the legs, so that's really interesting from a design standpoint. But much more important is how our designer Boosker translated the design in LEGO form. But before we take a deeper dive, let me tell you first about our web store www.brickvault.toys, where you can get the instructions and parts list for this and many more models. Our instructions and parts lists have been troubleshot and the models have been built in real life to make sure they are buildable. When you make the purchase, you'll immediately receive an email with a download link. And if you need to order the parts before you can start the build, we have a tutorial on our website that guides you through the easy process of getting the parts. With your purchase you support the talented builders that take the time out of their lives to make the best models possible with bricks and you also support us so we can continue bringing you those models and making content. So visit www.brickbot.toys or click the link in the description below and let's get back to the video. First off, here are the dimensions of the walker. You can find the exact numbers in the product description on our website. But just so you have a general idea of the size, here's a crosshead screwdriver next to it. Boosker again made a blueprint for it to compare to the in-universe vehicle. And I at least can compare it to the models I have in my studio, which are not too many yet. But I still think that it's interesting to see it next to some other vehicles and how they would compare in-universe. The first thing I have to acknowledge is the dedication of the designer to minimize panel gaps because it's really dang impressive how they managed to line up all the different angles so perfectly. My brother who built the model was impressed with how easygoing the build went even though we have some really impressive techniques used all over. That speaks for the instructions quality and the care that Boosker put into this and their other creations. We have some really interesting sideways and upside down building for the side walls and I really like the fact that this black area is an actual indentation in the armor instead of just black tiles to depict this detail. It gives this model so much depth, I really like it. I also always love the Lego math here with all the wedge plates lining up perfectly everywhere on this build, so satisfying. We have this cannon on top that is able to be rotated 360 degrees and I really like the shaping up here too. And of course it can also fit a gunner minifig that has a printed council in front of it. The large cannon can be angled to the side slightly. That's necessary for the dropship to properly sit on top. I'm gonna show you that in a bit, but first let's focus on the legs for a second. Both main legs are able to be rotated on three points the shoulder, the knee and the feet have hinges and you can best post them when you insert this black stand in the bottom of the walker, which is also necessary for the dropship connection. It is however also possible to post the walker's legs in a walking position like Boosker shows us here. That's really impressive to say the least. And I first didn't even try that out because I didn't know it could actually do that. Famously, this walker has a third leg in the middle that can be folded up and away off side. It has a little space here that it perfectly rests in when it's folded up. And we also have some detailing on the underside for those heat grills or whatever they're supposed to represent. When folded down, the third leg even supports the walker a little bit, which is an accurate detail. Don't worry though. The walker can perfectly stand on its own two main legs. They are really sturdy and I'm not afraid just grabbing it and setting it back down wherever I want. This build is really easy to handle. I just grab it from the back. That's the easiest way I found and yeah, super easy to move around. Of course, we also have an interior that has space for two driver minifigs sitting down. And I suppose this middle stud is for a potential Palpatine hologram piece, so the clones in the LEGO universe can also execute Order 66. The roof rests on top of these two exo pieces, so it can get out of place, which is really nice. And of course, I gotta show you how it connects to Boosker's dropship as well. We have two stands. One has to be inserted in the bottom of the ATAP, so it can carry the weight of the dropship resting on top. And one goes under the head of the dropship, and yeah, that's definitely a cool look. 
that I haven't seen anyone do before in the LEGO community. I tried that myself with my own dropship in ATAP, but gave up because it was so difficult finding a way to connect the two. Speaking of, I just know you were probably waiting for a comparison between this new version and my older design of the ATAP, so here you go. You can clearly see this new design gets dwarfed by my older model. Like I said in the ATT video, I again went with the width of a minifig here to determine the size of my model, and Boostcore probably went with the height, so minifig scale can look either way. There's no such thing as perfect minifig scale, it's up to interpretation and preference, but seeing both models next to a minifig, I have to say it looks much better in a smaller scale here. Generally, you can see the new version has less studs showing, especially on the side armor plating, and again you can see I just put tiles here for this black detailing on the side instead of Boothker who made it 3D. I have to say as well, and that was one of the more frequent complaints I got with my ATAP, its size makes it kinda unsturdy to stand up. It works, but you have to find the right balance point and it was always a little nerve-wracking setting it up at a convention, I have to admit. No problem with Boosker's model at all. I'm super confident pushing on it like this and there's no chance of it collapsing on its own weight or tipping forward or backwards. So yeah, as one would assume, the new one is an obvious update to the older model and eliminates a bunch of flaws of my older model, which I can really appreciate here. Although I still like my ATAP the most out of all of my OG Republic designs. Anyways, that's the all new ATAP for ya. Really happy to have this Trinity of Republic Force released. This ATAP would do perfect in a Kashyyyk or Felucia diorama. If you want to build this model for yourself, you can get the instructions and parts list on brickvault.toys. And as always, thank you for watching. Please like if you enjoyed the video and this beautiful custom build, or feel free to dislike if you didn't. Either way is totally encouraged. Please tell me in the comments below which model you think will be the next release, and if you're right, I'll shout you out in next week's release. Alright, thanks for watching. I already said that. Anyways, we'll see you next time at Brickwall.